Those, those blocks on the, king's, on the roof of the king's chamber weigh 70 tons each. Now, Egyptologists will tell you that, oh, they could move heavy blocks because they put them on wet sand and they push them along on wet sand. Well, maybe if you're just at ground level, that will do. But when you're 350 feet above the ground as you are in the king's chamber, that won't do at all. I don't know how they did it. All I know is they did it. I don't think anybody knows how they did it, how they lifted those stones, how they brought them up to that level. I think we're looking again at a lost technology. Today, we have a fascinating topic that has captivated humanity for centuries. The possibility of alien life. From movies to books, the idea of extraterrestrial beings has always intrigued us. It's no secret that humans have always been fascinated by the idea of life beyond Earth. Ever since we discovered the vastness of our solar system, the possibility of other life forms existing out there has captured our imaginations. But the big question remains, where are the aliens? How do they survive in the vastness of space? Are we alone in the universe? These questions have puzzled experts and scientists for years, leading to a wide range of opinions and theories. Let's talk about Graham Hancock, a prominent writer and researcher known for his extensive work on ancient civilizations and the search for alien life. Born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1950, Graham studied sociology at Durham University before embarking on a successful career in journalism. However, his insatiable curiosity led him to delve deeper into the mysteries of our planet. Graham has authored numerous books and even created his own Netflix series, Ancient Apocalypse, which explores the connections between ancient civilizations and possible alien encounters. Hancock has been vocal about his theories on alien life and the origins of humanity. He suggests that there might have been an advanced civilization on Earth long before humans emerge. To support his claims, he points to various intriguing discoveries. For instance, let's consider the Great Pyramids of Giza. These ancient structures have perplexed experts for centuries, as the methods used to build them remain a mystery. Graham believes that the construction of the pyramids provides conclusive proof of an ancient forgotten technology the Great Pyramids and Advanced Technology. The Great Pyramids of Giza have always fascinated us with their incredible size and precise construction. I mean, how on earth did the ancient Egyptians manage to lift those enormous granite blocks, some weighing as much as 70 tons each? How do you think they did that? Well, some of them, the, the granite in the Great Pyramid comes from more than 500 miles to the south. Um, if you look at the famous king's chamber, its walls and its roof are, uh, the, the ceiling of the king's chamber, are all made with gigantic uh, granite blocks. Stunning They're, detail. Stunning detail. Those, those blocks on the king's chamber, the roof of the king's chamber, weigh 70 tons each. Now, Egyptologists will tell you that, oh, they could move heavy blocks because they put them on wet sand and they push them along on wet sand. Well, maybe if you're just at ground level, that will do. But when you're 350 feet above the ground as you are in the king's chamber, that won't do at all. I don't know how they did it. All I know is they did it. I don't think anybody knows how they did it, how they lifted those stones, how they brought them up to that level. I think we're looking again at a lost technology. According to Graham Hancock, there might be more to this story than meets the eye. He suggests that these awe-inspiring feats of engineering could be attributed to an ancient form of technology that we haven't fully grasped yet. Graham proposes that the ancient Egyptians might have employed techniques involving sound manipulation or other advanced methods that are beyond our current understanding. This idea challenges the mainstream archaeological narrative, which often attributes these ancient achievements to more conventional methods like ramps, pulleys, and sheer manpower. But Graham raises an intriguing point. He argues that our current knowledge and limited understanding of ancient technologies could be hindering our ability to explain these magnificent wonders. Think about it for a moment. The Great Pyramids were built thousands of years ago, and yet they still stand tall and proud today. The precision with which these structures were erected is astonishing, considering the tools and resources available at that time. It makes you wonder if there might be more to the story than what we currently comprehend. Could it be that the ancient Egyptians possessed a level of knowledge and technology that has been lost to us over the millennia? 
Maybe they had some understanding of sound frequencies or other advanced techniques that allowed them to manipulate the massive stone blocks with relative ease. After all, we've witnessed the power of sound vibrations in modern times, so who's to say that our ancient predecessors didn't harness this knowledge in their own way? While it's essential to approach these ideas with an open and critical mind, it's also crucial not to dismiss them outright. History has shown us time, and again that our understanding of the past is constantly evolving as new discoveries challenge our preconceived notions. So, the mystery of how the ancient Egyptians built the Great Pyramids continues to captivate us, and perhaps by exploring alternative theories and pushing the boundaries of our knowledge, we'll eventually unlock the secrets behind these awe-inspiring structures. The Antikythera Mechanism Now let's turn our attention to the Antikythera Mechanism, a remarkable artifact that has baffled researchers for decades. Discovered in the early 20th century from a shipwreck off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera, this ancient device has been called the world's oldest computer. But what exactly is it, and how does it challenge our understanding of ancient technology? Graham Hancock sheds light on this fascinating piece of history. The Antikythera mechanism is an intricate assemblage of gears, dials, and inscriptions that dates back over 2,000 years. When they found that ancient Greek uh, computer thing, mm -hmm. on, what, what is that called? The, the Antikythera anti mechanism. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that testifies to a lost navigational skill that, yes. we, that we have not taken account of before. Incredibly complex, yeah. and it took a long time for them to figure out what that even is. Yeah. What do they think that is now? Initially thought to be a mere curiosity, it was later revealed to be a complex astronomical instrument capable of predicting celestial events with remarkable accuracy. Just imagine the astonishment of archaeologists and scientists when they realized that our ancestors had created such a sophisticated device. It's like finding an ancient laptop buried deep in the sands of time. But how did the ancient Greeks, who lived long before the advent of modern technology, manage to construct such an intricate mechanism? Graham Hancock suggests that this discovery challenges our conventional narrative of ancient civilizations. It implies that our ancestors possessed a level of knowledge and technical expertise that we may have underestimated. Um, it, it tracks the movements of the planets. It's a it's a navigational device. It's uh, it, it it's a geared cogged uh, mm. system that allows you to track the passage of time and figure out where you are. It's a, it's some kind of navigational device. It's not fully understood. And yet. how old is that? I think that goes back to Greek times. I'm guessing here because the Greek times are not of great interest to me, but I'm thinking around about 500 BC. This raises a crucial question. What other advanced technologies might ancient civilizations have developed that are yet to be discovered? The Antikythera mechanism represents a remarkable fusion of art, astronomy, and engineering. It demonstrates an understanding of complex celestial movements and the mathematics required to calculate them. It's a testament to the ingenuity and intellectual prowess of our ancient predecessors. It's easy to dismiss these achievements as mere outliers, anomalies in the historical record, but perhaps they are just the tip of the iceberg, hinting at a lost era of human advancement that remains shrouded in mystery. One of the most profound questions Graham Hancock has tackled, the origin of human life. He highlights the work of renowned molecular biologist Francis Crick, co-discoverer of the DNA structure. If that was the whole story, then we would find this DNA signal in North America and in Central America. We would not find it only in the Amazon. In his book, Life Itself, Its Origin and Nature, Crick proposed the possibility that humans may have evolved from aliens. He argued that the complexity of human DNA could not have arisen spontaneously on Earth and suggested that life may have been intentionally seeded by extraterrestrial beings. This concept is known as panspermia. Crick's idea of panspermia is based on the understanding that the building blocks of life, such as amino acids and nucleotides, can exist in space. It is believed that these organic molecules could have been delivered to Earth through comets, asteroids, or interstellar dust, providing the necessary ingredients for the development of life. The theory of panspermia suggests that life may have originated on another planet or moon within our own solar system, or even from a distant star system. 
These microbial life forms, known as seeds, could have survived the harsh conditions of space and eventually found their way to Earth. Once here, they could have thrived and evolved into more complex organisms, including humans, over billions of years. While Crick's idea of panspermia is intriguing, it is important to note that it is still a speculative hypothesis and has not been conclusively proven. The origin of life remains an open question in scientific research and various theories continue to be explored. It's worth mentioning that there are alternative theories regarding the origin of human life that don't involve extraterrestrial intervention. The most widely accepted scientific view is that human beings evolved through a process known as biological evolution, driven by natural selection and genetic variation. This theory, supported by a vast amount of evidence, suggests that humans share a common ancestor with other primates and have gradually evolved over millions of years. While the question of the origin of human life is complex and multifaceted, scientists continue to investigate and uncover new insights through ongoing research and discoveries. The search for answers to this fundamental question remains a fascinating and ongoing scientific endeavor. While some of Hancock's ideas may be met with skepticism, it is through questioning and open-mindedness that we advance our knowledge and unravel the mysteries of our world. The beauty of intellectual discourse lies in exploring diverse perspectives and entertaining unconventional ideas. So, whether you agree or disagree with Graham Hancock's theories, the important thing is to engage with them critically and keep the spirit of curiosity alive. After all, it is through exploration and questioning that great discoveries are made. Let's continue to delve into the depths of our shared history seeking answers to the unanswered questions and embracing the mysteries that still lie before us. Who knows what remarkable revelations await us in the future?